東京ライフラストビーワン。Well, good, good morning,、uh, good afternoon,、uh, or good evening.、Uh, it depends on、uh, where you are watching this and, and listening to us. It's my, my pleasure to, to moderate this session. It's, it's an honor to moderate this session. My name is Mario Diniz Ribeiro. I work in Porto. And it's my privilege to announce that we will have、uh, with us, well, Uh, two masters of the topic that we will、um, approach today.、Um, Professor Ken Chi Yao,、uh, I, I will introduce him, but you all know him very well.、Uh, it's a worldwide expert and he's a professor at the Fukuoka University. He's, he's, for us,、uh, worldwide, namely in the West, it's, it's also relevant that he was a visiting assistant professor in Nottingham、um, and already. 15 years ago, and he influenced quite a, while, a lot、uh, the Western way of practice. And he has several pr pr prizes、um, during his, his, his career. We will have with us to, to also to、uh, uh, break the ice and to put some questions.、Um, again, you, the, there is no need for introductions, but Noria Uedo、uh, is, is also. Well known and is a vice director、um, at the Department of Gastrointestinal Oncology in Osaka International Cancer Institute. Is the is counselor of the Japanese Gastrointestinal、um, Endoscopy Society and is associate editor of Endoscopy、um, International Open. So it's my pleasure, honor, and of course,、um, my great commitment also with a r u i r o Inoue. Uh, a master of endoscopy and,、um, and a friend, and、uh, pr once again uh, congratulate uh, him to, for this initiative that, well, it's already the second year,、uh, but I think it will, it, will, it will prevail. So, Professor Yao, we will listen to your lecture、uh, with full attention, and then、uh, we will have some moments for discussion. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mario, for your very, very kind introduction. I'd like to talk about the subject entitled Magnifying Endoscopic Diagnosis and Classification of Early Gastric Cancer. In the 20th century, chromo endoscopy was a really powerful tool because it can make a diagnosis even for eight millimeters, very, very small region because it shows irregular margin. However, these minute cancers or early gastric cancers of superficial flat type remained limitations. In order to overcome this problem, we developed magnifying endoscopy technique. So, if you use black soft suit attachment as a tip of a scope, it can get maximal magnification, nice view. When we measure the maximum resolution power of the scope, that was 5.6 micrometers. This means we can dissect as small as capillaries, so which is the smallest unit in the human vessels. This is really nice, powerful tool. In addition to that, narrowband imaging was developed by Dr. Gono. As you well know, if you press the button, The narrowband filter is inserted, and then green and blue light with narrowband, narrowband with us projected. And then microvascular architecture and microsurface structure become very, very clear. So, magnifying endoscopy with narrowband imaging can visualize microvascular architecture and microsurface structure very clearly. So, this is the magnified endoscopic findings of normal f u n d i g r a n d mucosa. As you can see, for microvascular pattern, we can visualize sub epithelial capillary network clearly and collecting venules. For microsurface pattern, we can visualize micro marginal crypt epithelium and crypt opening as brownish hole. So, I made a proposal for a diagnostic system by magnifying the SOPI with narrowband imaging, that is, 
Visceral plus surface VS classification system. VS classification employs anatomical terms. Diagnosis by magnifying endoscopy with narrowband imaging should be made referring to anatomical terms. They are definitely logical and scientific methods. So we published a paper showing VS classification system for diagnosis of early gastric cancer by magnifying endoscopy with narrowband imaging in 2009. The VS classification is really simple. For both V and S, we can just classify as regular, irregular, or absent. This is really simple. And the criteria for early gastric cancer is really simple. So one, irregular microvascular pattern with a demarcation line, and or two, irregular microsurface pattern with a demarcation line. It is also very simple criteria. After that, we established magnifying endoscopy simple diagnostic algorithm for early gastric cancer called method G based on evidence-based medicine. So this is really simple diagnostic algorithm. If we detect suspicious region by conventional white light imaging, and then we magnify it, and if the demarcation line, we should firstly assess demarcation line. If it is absent, we can make a diagnosis of non-cancer straightforward. If the demarcation line is present, we need to assess irregular microvascular pattern and or irregular microsurface pattern. If both are absent, it's non-cancer. If either or pre either present, it is, it is diagnosed as cancer. I'd like to show how to apply method G based on VS classification system, showing good examples. So first, I'd like to show definition of a demarcation line. Definition line, demarcation line's definition is a border between the region and non-region areas, discernible through an abrupt, abrupt change in microvascular and or microsurface pattern. Abrupt change is very important. So this is conventional heart rate imaging showing redness in the antrum. If we magnified it, there is no abrupt change in microvascular pattern and in microsurface pattern at the margin. So demarcation line is absent. This is diagnosed as non-cancer. If we magnified it, there is a clear demarcation line between the region and the background mucosa. In such cases, we need to assess inside the demarcation line so both microvascular pattern and microsurface pattern shows regular. So both irregular microvascular pattern and irregular microsurface pattern are absent. So it is diagnosed as non-cancer. When we magnify this region, at the margin, there is a clear demarcation line. In such cases, we need to investigate inside the demarcation line very carefully so if you look at marginal crypt epithelial morphology, it shows quite irregular or heterogeneous in shape and size. So this is irregular micro, microsurface pattern. And if you look at the microvascular pattern carefully, individual microvessel shows irregular. And this microvascular pattern shows quite heterogeneous in morphology and size. This is irregular microvascular pattern and we can make a diagnosis as cancer with high confidence. So now I'd like to show some clinical applications briefly. First one is differential diagnosis in screening endoscopy, gastritis versus early gastric cancer. So we've got nice evidence regarding this accuracy. So accuracy is really high compared with conventional white light imaging. And when we perform magnified narrowband imaging subsequently after conventional white light imaging, 
the sensitivity and specificity are both really high. It's remarkably high. But anyway, I'd like to show my new cancer case. So we've already reported in. So there is a minute depressed region in gastric body. And when we magnified it, there's a clear demarcation line. Inside the demarcation line, both microvascular pattern and microsurface pattern shows regular. So this is diagnosed non-cancer. The histological finding indeed shows intestinal metaplasia. So there is very, very subtle region in the antrum, that's pale flat mucosa. When you magnify it at the margin, there is a clear demarcation line. And inside the demarcation line, there is distinct irregular microvascular pattern and absent microsurface pattern. This is diagnosed as cancer. So histologically, it shows very differentiated adenocarcinoma. During the screening and the scopy, I noticed this very, very subtle and minute region at the antrum. When I magnified it with maximal magnification, immediately after that, there's a clear demarcation line. However, inside the demarcation line, the microvascular pattern is obscured because the white opaque substance is present. It obscures subepithelial microvessels. In such cases, we can use white opaque substance as alternative marker for the analysis. When you look at white opaque substance carefully, it shows quite fine. However, there is irregularity in morphology and arrangement. So we can say this is irregular microsurface pattern referring to white opaque substance morphology. And then we dissected it without taking any biopsy. It shows well differentiated adenocarcinoma, two millimeters. So this is another case, slightly depressed minute region. So it clearly shows demarcation line and irregular microvascular pattern and irregular microsurface pattern. When we resected it, it is well differentiated adenocarcinoma. So this is one of the ultimate cases. So my one of my younger colleagues detected this very, very subtle region. This is minute 0-2B region, three millimeters in size. When we magnified it, at the glance, there is a clear demarcation line and irregular microvascular pattern and irregular microsurface pattern. So we resected it without taking any biopsies. It shows well differentiated adenocarcinoma. So in the case of minute region, it can magnify narrow band imaging shows some very, very remarkable advantages to conventional endoscopy. Anyway, recently we published JGES guidelines for endoscopic diagnosis for early gastric cancer last year. So referring to this guideline, image enhanced endoscopy is useful for the qualitative diagnosis of early gastric cancer. Thus, its use is recommended. However, I'd like to show limitations of magnifying the narrow band imaging as well. So we tested diagnostic performance of VS classification system by this very, very large scale feasibility study. We recruited thousands of patients and the outcome was really nice. However, it cannot be optical biopsy by this high, high confidence accuracy alone. So we analyzed the false negative case, which was diagnosed as non-cancer with high confidence level by magnifying narrow band imaging, and which was diagnosed as cancer by histological diagnosis of biopsy specimen. So this is conventional white light imaging, pale superficial flat deep rest regions. This is it. So when that endoscopist magnified it, he or she diagnosed 
this is non cancer because it shows demarcation line, but it distinctly shows regular microvascular and regular microsurface pattern. So this was diagnosed non cancer with high confidence. But when the endoscopist took biopsy, the histological specimen shows signet ring cell carcinoma. Because in the early stage of signet ring cell carcinoma, carcinomatous cells invade horizontally without any destruction of surface epithelium and crypt and subepithelial capillaries. So this is why uh, no remarkable change was noted. But anyway, this pale superficial flat or depressed region are really limitation of this technique. So when we exclude pale superficial flat or depressed region, sensitivity and specificity is uh, nearly 100%. So we concluded this can be optical biopsy. But anyway, please remember when you observe conventional white light imaging, pale or pale superficial region is really limitation. You don't need to do any magnification, but instead, please take biopsy. Otherwise, marine cloud narrowband imaging can be optical biopsy. So this is very important point. In conclusion, Magnifying narrowband imaging diagnosis based on VS classification system can be optical biopsy in screening endoscopy. But if we follow the proper strategy considering, considering its limitations. This is my message. Please practice your technique in every endoscopy procedure using magnifying endoscopy with a black soft food attachment. This is it. Best technique gives you the best diagnosis. I wrote a book as a sole author in four languages. Please refer to this book. And we published JGS guideline for endoscopic diagnosis of articles cancer. Again, I'd like to I'd like to introduce this guidelines. Please refer to this article. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. So thank you and uh, thank you for your great uh, lecture that, uh, of course, summarized um, very well how to how to proceed um, uh, using magnification endoscopy. I will give the not the floor the air to Naria if he wants to make some questions. Uh, I also have some, but uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Kenshi. As always, I really, you know, respect you because uh, you are all, your policy or lecture is always consistent. Because uh, sometimes some professor takes something new, and uh, but you always, you know, follow the same thing. So I, I really respect you. So I think I want to ask about some technical, practical thing because it. It's useful for me, and also maybe it is useful for audience. And uh, you emphasize that the use of cap. Do you think it's really um, mandatory or essential for the zoom endoscopy? Uh, or how about a uh, near focus, a uh, near focus endoscope? So that is also a uh, very prevalent house, even outside Japan. What do you think about the use of cap for such kind of endoscopy? Oh, thank you for your uh, nice question. So the reason why I never change is at, from the beginning, I am always using consistent techniques. This is why I, I could get consistent findings. So this is why I never change. But in other words, uh, as you mentioned, uh, black soft food attachment is essential because stomach is a really difficult target for magnifying endoscopy because stomach is the widest lumen in gastrointestinal tract. And it is very difficult to get very, very close view. And it's also always moving due to peristalsis, 
respiration and aortic pulsation. And this, at the first time, I think it was the most difficult part to get very, very close view, that is marine finding and scopic finding. But when, after I thought of using black sword for the attachment, it becomes very easy to fix the focal distance. The focal distance is very short. Uh, it is only two millimeters. We need to fix the focal distance consistently at two millimeters. But if you use a black soft suit attachment, it is easy. So this is why I said uh, it is mandatory. And from the technical point of view, from the methodological or optical point of view, so if we would like to uh, analyze microvascular architecture, as I told uh, in my presentation, at least eight micrometer resolution is needed in order to dissect capillary. As I told you, this is a small unit in human vessels. So this is mandatory condition uh, to get uh, consistent finding. So science needs consistent technique in order to get, uh, in order to avoid sampling error. But anyway, so for such reasons, I, I think black source food is mandatory. But with regard to uh, near focus, so I think it's also mm, mandatory. But the previous model of near focus scope, the resol maximum resolution was less than eight micrometers in Japan. But fortunately, uh, extra 190 near focus has, uh, near focus maximum resolution was 7.9 micrometers. So when we use a black soft food attachment at proper um, condition, so we can get uh, as small as um, nine point, so, sorry, eight same, micrometers. Same resolution, same dissecting power. So I this see. is my comment. Okay. And uh, uh, how, one more thing, uh, how about manage the mucus or something? Sometimes we really struggle with the mucus, especially for stomach. So do you have any um, advice for proper preparation such as mucolytic agents or how about H. pyri eradication or PPI usage or something like that? Okay, in the case of referred, referred patient to a hospital, mm -hmm. so when we met the patient to our hospital, so I always prescribe PPI in order to reduce background inflammation. Before the scope? Before the scope. How long? So that depends, but uh, several days or mm, mm -hmm. one week, something like that. And just before the procedure, as you know, uh, we will give the patient to drink, to ask the patient to drink a preparation solution uh, containing uh, deforming agent and pronase. Uh, this is a routine in Japan, but not outside Japan, as you know. And during the procedure, if the mucus is problem, uh, water immersion technique is really useful in order to remove the mucus. And using the saline is also effective to reduce the mucus secretion. Not, not the tap water. But we, to tell you the truth, we haven't got any evidence, but according to my uh, our, our experiences, uh, saline may be better than tap of water. Do you think H. pyri eradication or H. pyri status affect uh, diagnostic accuracy or value? I don't think so. So we are now accumulating the evidence. Probably this is my personal thinking now, but that depends on not on H. pyri status, but that depends on histological atypia. Historical abnormality. Really historical... depend original histology. Yes. I see. So, of course, uh, age parallel eradicated patient cancer shows uh, very, very difficult 
to diagnose. But this is mainly due to, perhaps independently due to histological findings. So if, if the histological finding is a very, very uh, weak, difficult uh, in the non-era dislocated case, our diagnosis is also difficult. I think that's a matter of histological architecture. I Maybe H. pyra patient with H. pyra eradication receive frequent endoscopy already. So oh. maybe only small or very subtle lesion is remaining. Maybe something, some, some kind of bias can also yeah. affect. I agree with okay. you. Mm. I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Thank you. Almost thank all. you for. Yeah. Thank you for your for your for your questions. I also have um, a question that it is more. So you have you have been discussing magnification endoscopy and mostly uh, addressing NBI as the um, as the method for chrome endoscopy. Any idea for other providers? Do you think it it can be applicable also if you use other scopes that are available, such as uh, from uh, Fujifilm or from Pentax? So. Unfortunately, I have uh, no experience using uh, Pentax, but I sometimes use Fuji in Latin America or some other place. So Fuji's um, BLI can also work. It's equivalent or comparable to NBI. I think so. Okay. And, um, and in this new era that we are moving, uh, of course, one of the things that all of us should um, take care of is that when you discuss about diagnosis, you have a long um, experience of detecting. And in the Western world, we are still, um, well, moving on that direction. We have, we still have, we have a, a lot of, uh, of work to do on the very basic steps to improve uh, mucosal cleaning that you were just mentioning and how to observe the mucosa, etc. Do, do, do you have any idea how this classification that you developed nicely will behave when we, we have, for instance, new methods from artificial intelligence coming, how, the, how these are being tested? Do you have any research project on that field? Do you have any idea to share with us? So, uh, so for the detection by white, conventional white light imaging, so I've already developed e-learning, as you know. Um, so, but using that ideas, so some venture engineer is developing AI, which navigates systematic screening for the stomach. So hopefully uh, it is nearly completed. So hopefully we, We'd like to test that feasibility of such navigation system of AI, uh, so which navigate systematic screening of the stomach. So yeah. that AI checks the uh, 22 points that I showed in uh, systematic screening protocol. So yeah. they checked it and give the instruction, something like that. And it probably then will uh, use also your uh, system of delineation uh, demarcation line and then the fixtures that you oh. developed. Yeah. So such magnifying endoscopy technique is uh, not for detection. So this is for characterization. As yeah. you know. Yeah. So hopefully we plan to develop <laughs> AI. So yeah. of course we already tested that VS classification can work in clinical practice in our center randomized control study. But it is exciting uh, to, to develop such AI, which, yeah. which replace me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nobody can replace you, not even <laughs> artificial intelligence. So um, I think, I think we, we, we discussed uh, this topic of screening and diagnosis. I think uh, for uh, the most important thing for our community is that you should never miss the chance of observing definitely and, and, and completely the stomach using your best scopes your and you should learn 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 because this is you should you can only detect what you know how to recognize yeah. and use simple classifications that are available hopefully we will have artificial intelligence to help us but um, I, I think this is this was an amazing session 
I would like again to honor um, Aruiru Inoue for, for this Congress and also our lecturer, uh, Kenshi Yao and uh, Noriya Uedo that, well, the, you, the world knows that you know each other very well. And it's a, it's a privilege to be with you in this session. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.